me Stormy and here's your horoscope for June of 2020. Welcome. It is a busy month, my friends. We have eclipses, which I don't know if you know this or not Aquarius, so I'm going to just throw it out here. But every time there is an eclipse for Aquarians in the general horoscope, it will always have an impact on your relationships because in the general, Aquarius is in the first house and Leo sits in the seventh house, which is ruled by the sun. So movements that involve the sun will also put a pull on your relationships. So this month, as we've got two eclipses and then one coming smack in July as well, there will be an emphasis on your relationships as well, even if the eclipse doesn't specifically happen in that seventh house. So if you already knew that, then I'm just going to be quiet. And if you didn't, just kind of keep that in mind as you travel around. And as you look at it in your own chart, look at where those Leo and energies are at and where those Cancerian energies are at. Every eclipse will definitely have an impact in those areas as well. We have also got 60% of our planets this month in retrograde. So a thing I want to say too is that even though it's a busy month and we've got a lot of movements happening, 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 a lot of transitions are happening this month as well, right? Like the disruptions are there, but the actual play out of how that comes to the table, I think is very much so delayed because everything is retrograde. We are in a high, high retrograde period. So just know that the stamps could be created here, even if you don't see the impacts of them for about a month or so, okay? Let's jump in and talk about what's happening this month. On the second, Mercury, who's in the energy of Cancer, is going to begin its shadow phase. So it's going to begin to slow down things. So if things at work for you, in your health, in your thinking, in your daily routine start to feel like they're a little off kilter, just know Mercury's starting to slow down. So this area may be slowing down as well. Or even more importantly, I think, please start taking note specifically at the second. If you have health conditions or old thoughts or something like that that are coming back into your purview here, you may be needing to begin to address those because you'll definitely look at them during the retrograde. So be mindful of kind of what's coming back around your way at this particular point on the second. On the fifth, we've got a full moon lunar eclipse happening in the energy of Sagittarius, so lighting up the area of your friends. Now, a full moon says that something needs to be ended, acknowledged, or adjusted. We need to create a shift, but an eclipse brings a good old shake up and disruption that will last for about six months. In the 11th house, this is friends, groupings, organizations, long range plans. Mercury is also going retrograde this month. So certainly in the 11th house, I begin to think of technology, your gears, your gadgets, any of the high tech equipment that you use or you need or you're involved with. This could start to get a little bit squeaky here over the next handful of months. But what's happening at the eclipse is it may be showing you where an upgrade in all of these levels is needed. Now, we have been in quarantine or stay at home status for some time. So there's been a lot of interaction that's obviously been happening online, which is very 11th house. And at this point, if you're kind of feeling this connection or need for people as well, like your relationships are being tested here in some way, shape or form, make arrangements to see which ways you can relieve that particular area and still have it be very abundant. This will shift though again over the next six months, okay? On the 18th, Mercury is actually going to take that retrograde in the energy of Cancer all the way until July 12th. So now you will review, re-edit, revise, um, reconnect with different things around your health, your daily routine, work freelance projects are beautiful here. I think too, though, just because all of our outer planets, Saturn, Jupiter, or Pluto are all in retrograde, it gives me a thought too that maybe in your business or your company, maybe even in your industry, maybe even just globally and economically shifts are changing that kind of make you review your daily um your daily interactions with the world. Whatever it is though here, Mercury is trying to bring your attention and your mind back to something to see if these areas are secure, Cancer. Are they emotionally nourishing? Can you stand upon them? So you'll do that over the next handful of weeks. On the 20th, the sun enters into the energy of Cancer, so it's helping you see and make these changes because you're motivated. The sun brings light, heat, life, and vitality. You are motivated. You are ready to be seen here to make this area vital. It also shifts us into a new season. We will welcome in summer here in the north and winter to our friends in the south. So whatever it is, the season change is upon you. But remember, you may not feel this for about a month or so because we're so delayed, but the work is still happening here. I also love sun and Cancer 
answer because it sometimes brings a beautiful project to your table at work for you to work on or your health becomes the project over the next four weeks, right? Now to help that, just a day later on the 21st, we've got a new moon solar eclipse that's happening over here as well. So definitely going to light up these relationships in regards to work, in regards to health. Do you need to find a more nurturing, nourishing way to support your body? Do you need a nutritionist? Are you looking for a different kind of health practitioner? This is interesting too because it's Cancerian energy. So Maybe it's not even you. Maybe you are showing up as support staff to a parent who's needing to make some changes. You're showing up in service, sixth house, to someone else who needs your help. So this could definitely be a support role for you as well. I'll be interested to see how this goes for you. Please let me know in the comment section down below how that manifests. On the 23rd, Neptune is going to go retrograde in the energy of Pisces all the way until November. Now this lights up your second house, okay? When Neptune is direct, we have this place where we can kind of move between the worlds, right? So it can be a little wishy-washy. And this is in the area of your finances, right? What are you doing with money? Like it could be like money is here and then it's just not, right? So that's a little bit of a hard place to be sometimes when it comes to how do I earn money, my possessions, my values, and things like that. As Neptune goes retrograde, one of the things that happens is our reality feels distorted here because it's very concrete. We don't have all the wavies and in between, so it's like, ah, what's happening here? Where this may be nice for you is that you get the job. You have the job. The money feels very concrete. It doesn't feel like it's running in and out of your life, dissolving just as quickly as it comes. Now, that may be great, and what else is great is that as Neptune is retrograde in this area, he's going to ask you to create an ideal, to create the vision in this area of your life of what you would like this to be. What do you want financially, right? Go create the vision. The example I always use is that this chair, before it was a useful material chair, it was just a vision. Right? It had to be created here. So you create this new financial place for yourself, a new value self, a new skills for yourself. And then as we come to November, you're able to really manifest that in reality, concrete material reality. So work on that during this retrograde, okay? On the 25th, Venus comes out of retrograde in the energy of Gemini. This is in your fifth house. This is joy. This is play. This is romance. This is creativity. This is taking a risk, right? It is a wonderful, beautiful energy for you to experience. While Venus was retrograde, you were going over the value of things here, right? And sometimes with Venus retrograde in the fifth house, you're like, I haven't had any money to go play and have some value and joy and vacation. I've had COVID, girl. I haven't been going anywhere. <laughs> okay, but now that Venus is out of retrograde in Gemini, You've got the opportunity to bring some magnetism here, to have conversations that bring you joy, share information that brings you joy, take a risk with some joy, express yourself here because Venus is going to make this area magnetic and it's also going to try and bring a harmony for you here. This is a great energy for you as well if you have children, right? And they may be like, whoo, school's out, thank goodness, or they're just coming to a place that seems like there's a little bit more emotional intelligence and equilibrium available for you. So, I love this area for you this month. Venus in the fifth house is happy, happy, happy. On the 28th, we see Mars moving into the energy of Aries where he is comfortable. So he is in full power here. Now this lights up your third house. So the one thing I'll tell you is Aries trust their instincts and they can also be very impulsive, which sometimes is great because it's fast decision making, right? And this is in the thinking house, the third house of the mind, how we communicate, where we make decisions, we teach things, we share information from here. Siblings, certainly, right? So this can be great. You can have a lot of conversation going. You're busy. You've got a lot of information that's floating around. And maybe some of it feels like it's coming at you very, very quickly. Very Mars, very Aries energy. But the thing I will tell you to be cautious of or to be mindful of is that sometimes Aries just says what they're thinking. Right? They just say it. They just let it come out of their mouth. So remember, there are other people on the other side of the words that you'll be sharing this month. And uh, you are also on the other side of information. So if some information just hits you real hard, take a step back, take a minute and think, okay, is this what this person was trying to say? Is this what this is trying to communicate? Really dig into the value, Venus and Gemini, of the information that you are giving and receiving this month. And I think this will help it. On the other hand, Mars is Mars and Aries is Aries. If there is a contract, if there is a negotiation, if there are words that need to be had, you will have them because Mars is not afraid of a little conflict in order to clear the air. As we end this month on the 30th, we're going to see Jupiter and Pluto coming to get together again in their conjunction for the second of three times that they will come together. We saw the first one in April. Now they'll come together and then again in November. 
as these two come together, instead of being forward like they were in April, they are in retrograde together, lighting up the 12th house space. So what happens in April is that these two come together, they give you focus, they give you drive, they give you a push forward, but they also show you the wisdom of why you would stop doing something that you were doing in the way that you were doing it. In the 12th house, they have showed you the value in a spiritual awakening. They have showed you the value and why you would die off in this area because maybe some beliefs, some behaviors, some actions, some attitudes, something from the past you were holding on to is actually keeping you back instead of letting you move forward. So you get focused, you get driven here to make these changes in order to move you forward. They've maybe even shown you the value of, yes, launch that spiritual blog, launch this nutritional practice, whatever it is, it showed you the value. Now here as they come together in retrograde, you've been working on that thing or not, it's just been started, right? Right? And they show you in retrograde the value of going back over that thing. They're going to show you where it needs to be cleaned up, adjusted, or tweaks need to be made for this area to be immensely big for you. Now, the other thing I think about is as these two come together, because it's in retrograde, they show you that you have an immense capacity to overcome the challenges that stand in front of you. Even if they're blocks from the past or they are subconscious, unconscious things, people outside of you are likely seeing you do these things or you've been able to establish a pattern of your own behavior and you see why it's not valuable anymore and you're able to take the resources effectively and efficiently to be successful and outgrow that so that you can see it manifest in something really successful down here in November. So Aquarius, I think it's going to be a good month. It's a busy month. I hope you'll keep me posted on how things are manifesting for you down in the comment section down below. I also hope you are really enjoying the eat and greets. We have more astrologer friends lined up to come over, visit, speak, talk with us. Let me know who you would like to see here as well or topics you'd love to hear about because we want to definitely get a wide range of information going here while we've got all of this tech and all of these people and all of this willingness at our fingertips, okay? Like this video, comment, share, subscribe, please. I love you so much and I look forward to seeing you next month. Bye Aquarius.